All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to A Handful of Hope. My name is Jesse Brizendine, and today I am bringing you Chris Bartle. Woo! <laughs> Chris Bartle obviously has a lot of energy, so he's going to talk to us about exercise and movement today. He's the head strength and conditioning coach at Mount Baker High School in Deming, Washington. He's also a co-owner and co-founder of Elite Athlete Development, where he consults with various high school sports programs to help with their strength and conditioning as well as the owner of Bartle Strength and Conditioning, an online training business dedicated to helping working, dedicated to helping working adults between ages of 35 and 50 keep the belly fat off, develop nutritional habits that fit with their ideal lifestyle, and basically kick ass at life. Chris has been a personal trainer for over 11 years and has worked with hundreds of different clients, ranging from nine-year-old athletes to 65-year-olds battling cancer and everyone in between. Chris, welcome and thank you so much for being here man, and sharing a little bit with us, man. Nah, dude, it's a pleasure being here, man. I love you. And you know, uh, anytime you come and ring and I know this is going to be a good time. Yeah. Some of you, Chris may look a little familiar to you because you might recall, gosh, what was that Chris? Maybe 10 years ago or so. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Um, Bayside was around in 2009. Yeah. So 10, 11 years ago, I, yeah. I did yeah. a, or Chris and I rather, I had, I kept approached Chris with the idea and we had a YouTube series with, uh, we do different exercises and demoing different exercises. And so if you ever want some good exercise videos, which Chris is going to dive more into off of that, we have that. But then there's also one of them where we were wearing our Ultimate Warrior tank tops and we really hammed it up. Chris is also a, a wrestling fan who is, like me, loud and proud about his wrestling fandom. Specifically the Ultimate Warrior. The yeah. Warriors, yeah. Like uh, <clears throat> Dragon Steamboat. Like, yeah. Yeah, the classics. So Chris is Chris has been gracious enough to give us some time. He's got a he's got a really just an amazing uh, knowledge and vastness of understanding the human body and biomechanics inside of that brain of his. And I want to try to extrapolate some of that right now because Chris, right now, you know, we're in this we're in this really crazy time where there's there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of uh, stress, and you and I both know that exercise is probably the most important thing people can do. To combat that, the problem is, is that people who are active are being told they can't go to the gym, they can't go to their yoga studios, they can't go to their, their classes or anything like that. And then everybody's been kind of herded in to their homes, and, and many people are, are on permanent quarantine where they can only leave for certain things or are told to self-isolate, yep. which leads to most people spending time, more and more time indoors. And I'm wondering, you know, People who are approaching for the first time doing an at-home fitness program, where should they start? You know, that, that's a fantastic question. Um, to back up just a little bit, you, you really hit the nail on the head when you talked about people are stressed. And the biggest thing that, that people need to realize right now is you've got to keep that stress under control. Because when, you, when you're overly stressed, it releases a, a chemical a hormone in the body called cortisol. And while cortisol is a good thing in terms of bodybuilding, getting stronger athletic performance and stuff like that, when cortisol is elevated and chronically elevated in times like this, it's a really, really bad thing. And it can actually compromise your immune system and your ability to stay healthy. So managing stress is going to be huge. And one of those ways, if you're stuck in the home, is with body weight workouts. I, people these days are so enamored with the big box gyms or the CrossFit gyms, and they're all amazing and they're all fantastic and they all have a role, but we've gotten away as a society that's based on fitness. We've become so reliant on equipment, elliptical machines, stair masters, treadmills, um, the, the old school Nautilus machines. We got so reliant on those that people are freaking out right now because they don't understand that your body is the best loaded movement that you can possibly do you yeah. don't need to add external things all left and right there's a term called relative strength and it's and it's all about how you can move your body and just your body weight it's something that i talk to my high school kids about all the time because if you can't move your body and your body weight through space effectively, you're not going to be able to move it when I put an implement into your hands. That goes for people that work a desk job. If you're sitting down and you're like this all day, or you're a construction worker and you're pounding nails and you're bent over, you're putting a big stress on your body. So this is a fantastic time for people to get back in tune with their body using only body weight movements 
and just really trying to enjoy the, the aspect of, hey, look, I need to learn to move my body through space, and now's a perfect time to do it. I love that you said that, Chris, because I think that one of the – one of the things that really breeds fear is we feel we fear so hopeless and helpless and so limited. And I've been encouraging people to really look at opportunities that are within fear. And I love that you said that there's this right now is this extraordinary opportunity for people to really get connected with their, their physical body, like fall in love with these movements and that what you can actually do is instead of being so reliant on the equipment and the machines and stuff. And I think that's, you know, even taking it out of it, it's a great metaphor, right? Because we're so reliant on these types of things yeah. to do it that we're not doing enough of, of this kind of stuff, even though we're using a device to do it. Yeah. But you know what I mean? It's, it's, I think that's a great place to start. So <clears throat> people, they're, they're, they're getting home. They're, they're with their body now. What are the three, maybe there's two or three most important movements that you could give people to do at home workouts that they should be doing? Uh, great question, Jesse. But one thing I, I've learned from you, and I've learned this lesson for years and years and years, is to over-deliver. So I don't have three movements for you, buddy. I got six. Okay, awesome. Okay. So when I design programs, whether it's for an adult or a high school kid, we always focus on six primal or what I call our core movements, okay? I'm going to move out of the way because I wrote them on a board, Okay. So our six movements, and then every, we do this every day, whether we realize it or not. We do some sort of pushing. We do some sort of pulling. We do some sort of squat, a hip hinge, which I can demonstrate in a second, a lunge and a carry. If you think about everything that you do in life, you will do all of those movements in a day. Now, the pulling is a little bit more difficult than all the other ones, just because most of the time you need an implement. But if you're like me and you get a little crazy at the grocery store, you're pushing and you're pulling that grocery store going back and forth, and you turn it into a demolition derby and see if you can beat people to the line and do the most damage to their carts. So pulling is a little bit interesting. But if you think about it, if, if well, let's start with the bottom. Okay, let's start with carry. How do you carry your groceries? Everybody's running to the grocery store right now, right? They're mm -hmm. stockpiling up. Well, guess what? You're carrying something every day. How are you carrying it? That is important. I'm going to turn sideways. When you have your bags loaded, are your shoulders pulled back and in a nice straight line? Or are you letting the weight pull you mm -hmm. forward? Okay, so that's super important, how you carry things. If you have a young child, they're getting tired. Are you gonna carry them on the front? Are you gonna carry them on the sides? Are you gonna be on the back? Are you gonna be the cool dad and up on the shoulders with no hands and freak mom out? So there's lots of ways that we can carry things. High school kids in their backpacks. If you're a parent that you, and you have a kid in high school, load all the books, load everything you can in that backpack and then perform a squat. Now all of a sudden you just took a body weight movement and loaded it with things that you have in your house, mm. okay? Next up is a lunge and a hip hinge. When we were dealing with your back issues, when I was helping you come through those, we focused a lot on these because that's going to help keep your back healthy. The problem with being quarantined and stuck inside right now is people are going to want to sit and they're not going to want to do a lot of stuff, which leads to more bad posture and more stress on the lower back. So when we're doing things, if you, if you go to drop something on the ground, you go to pick up a pen, you can hip hinge, which is basically think of like the Japanese when they, when they first meet somebody or, or it's, you know, it, it's tradition that you bow. Well, watch how they bow. They push their hips back and they drop everything down. That's a hip hinge. That's one way to pick something up so we can incorporate those into your workouts. Um, the lunge, instead of just bending over, just split your stance, bend both knees down and come down together, okay? It's something that we do every single day. A squat, <laughs> guess what? Everybody has to sit down to go to the bathroom at some point during the day. So you're squatting, okay? It's perfect. And then push. Go ahead and lay on the ground and try and get up. You're going to have to push yourself off the ground at some point. So, bam. You have six primal movements that you do every day. Now, we got to find ways to make them not boring. Okay? And that's, that's a challenge with a lot of people that aren't in the fitness industry. They're like, okay, great, Chris. Thanks. You just, you just blew my mind with six primal movements. Well, how do I organize those? How do I do so? So, that's, that's where um, a little bit of knowledge of uh, program design can kind of really go along. And in trying to, I love that. I love that, Chris. And I love how you explained it because it's it's so true that those are the things we're doing every day. So let's build our movements around what we're already doing, right? And to try to 
to try to compartmentalize them into workable pieces. What does that look like for someone or how many times a day should they do these things? Is it, is it, you know, you should do 15 repetitions of a squat and 15 repetitions of push-ups, and should you do it all at once or should you do it three times throughout the day? You know, what, what's a good way to do that? Especially with people being at home more, is it, is it, you know, traditionally if we go to the gym, we go to the gym for one spot block of time, that's it. But with people being quarantined and at home more, is it more effective for them to break it up and do maybe like six micro workouts throughout the day? What are your thoughts on that? My, well, that's a great question. And I would answer it in, in one of two ways. One, um, it really depends on your, uh, what we call your training age. So how long have you been working out? If I have somebody that has never gone to the gym a day in their life, I'm not going to have them do four to five micro workouts throughout the day because that's just going to be way too much yeah. for their, their, their joints, their tendons, their ligaments, their muscles. They might be able to make it through day one maybe day two, but by the time that day three, day four comes around and, 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 de and DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness kicks in, they're probably not going to be able to move very well, especially if you're talking with more of a heavier obese population. Um, but if you're more advanced, then yeah, I mean, there's no reason why you can't pull a CrossFit and do three, four workouts in a day. And then about how much time should people allocate it to it? You know, that really depends. Um, it depends on how much time you want to do this. If you're right. playing with your kids, Make it last as long as you can. If you're doing it by yourself and you, and you have full-blown training ADD, keep it as short as you possibly can. Um, and just for some ideas, what I did down here, Jesse, is I wrote workout ideas. There's actually six different ways that I thought of quickly that people can organize workouts. So I'll go through them real quick. Okay. So we have what's called the, an EMOM or every minute on the minute. Pick one to two movements, say for five minutes. At the start of every minute, Jesse, you're going to do 10 squats. Hmm. On minute six, you're going to do 10 push-ups. Bam, 10 minutes, your workout's done. Awesome. You just did 100 squat, or you just did 50 <laughs> squat, 50 push-ups. On day two, um, instead of doing five minutes, do seven minutes of both. Then do nine minutes of both. And you can increase your time, and you're adding more reps, and you're getting more and more as you go. We have what's called sets reps, where you can just be like, all right, I'm going to do four movements. I'm going to do three sets of 10 of everything. Peace. Seacrest out. Okay. Number four, you have timed or challenge sets. These ones are actually super fun. You can, especially if you have roommates or people that you channel, that you work with, or you can FaceTime like this. I could be like, Jesse, boom, here we go. Three minutes, max push-ups. Who's going to win, you or me? Okay, so time sets. Countdowns. These are one of my all-time favorite fat-blasting workouts. Pick anywhere from two to ten movements. Start anywhere from ten to twenty reps and perform them in order. So if you have four movements... You do movement one for 10 reps, movement two for 10, movement three for 10, movement four for 10. Go back to movement one, do nine, nine, mm -hmm. nine, nine, eight, 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 all the way down to zero until you're done. Record your time, do the exact same workout in 48 hours and try and beat your time, okay? We have an AMRAP. I can be like, all right, buddy, here we go. Two movements, push-up squats. Jesse, you got 20 minutes to get as many reps of squats as you can. I'm going to give you five-minute rest. Then you're going to do as many reps of push-ups as you can in 20 minutes. So another version of a time thing. And then we have what's called a pyramid. These ones are super cool, but very, very challenging. Start at two reps, four reps, six, eight, 10, 12, 10, eight, six, four, two. So we're making that pyramid. Okay. You can also do an inverse pyramid where you can start at 10, go down to two and back up to 10. Those are really sadistic. So it really depends. You're only limited by your imagination when it comes to this stuff. There really is. So people that aren't personal trainers or strength coaches, they're like, ah, I can't, I can't think like you guys do. It's like, sure you can just get creative. You have a stopwatch, you have a kid, kids napping, boom, I got 45 minutes to crank something out. So it's, Write something down. I know tons of strength coaches are online right now giving away free programs. I'm, give, I'm writing free programs on my Facebook business page, Elite, Af Elite Athlete Development, shameless plug. Go over there and watch. I'm, I'm putting up body weight workouts Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. All you need is your body and your house. I'm putting video demonstrations for things that people that are movements that people might not know. But again, just use your imagination. And here's, here's something else, Jesse, that people aren't, that, that people are forgetting because they're so panicked about all this stuff, but you have these things called playgrounds. Go to a playground because there's always a bar that you can hang from or monkey bars that you can walk around or little dip stations that you can go. Yeah. The, 
the one thing that people fail to realize is unless you're age restricted and quarantined and not allowed to leave your house, get outside, get some fresh air. In Washington, it's gorgeous right now. We do, this is very non-typical March weather. It's blue sky and sunshine and upper 50s, low 60s right now, and nobody's outside. It is gorgeous outside right now. So I'm outside with the dog all day. After this, I'm going to go to a park and shoot some hoops with a four-year-old, and I'm going to school him in horse on a 10-foot rim so I can win. But you got to be active, and you got to get outside. Vitamin D, people, vitamin D. You know, something I love and appreciate about Chris is he's one of the few people I know that can have – such a sweet, sincere disposition when he's talking and work in words like, I know this is sadistic, but <laughs> and really mean it too. You know, I, I love what you said. Me, you understand. Yeah. And you know, Chris, I love what you said because <clears throat> one thing I've been talking with people is they think it's so important to set goals during this time, right? Yeah. Because a lot of times we're going into human beings were such creatures of habit. And part of what's causing some of the meltdowns that we're experiencing is you're taking a society of people that has made this same habit, wake up at a certain time, go to the same place at the same time, go to the gym at the same time, eat at the same time, all these types of things for, you know, five, 10, 20, 30, however long. And now all of a sudden we're not just removing one habit, we're removing all these habits. So we're having this whole self-destruct and we're wondering where to go. And so having goals is so great. Somebody was saying, you know, I'm gaining Corona pounds. I think doing something like that, it, it, setting a goal of, you know, I'm going to lose five pounds and said, I'm going to gain five pounds. I love the way you broke that down because what you've done is you've given people basically a virtually unlimited amount of options with what they can do with their body. And there's something Chris did there, I think, and you all should rewatch this and pay attention. He talked about doing a FaceTime, you know, doing a, some sort of competition with a friend. Building communities right now is so critical. We're human beings were communal creatures and being isolated. So doing something as simple as grabbing four friends, you know, it could be people who you know who are in there, people who are friends on Facebook. You can put a post on your Facebook and say, who wants to be, who wants to be workout partners with me for the next few weeks where we're on lockdown and quarantine you know, at home? And then create a little Facebook group with yourself that you can go in there and you can FaceTime with each other. You do a Zoom call like this and make it a habit. It, you can make an extraordinarily positive experience out of this you can make what does it make uh, lemonade out of your lemons yeah and it, it's just it doesn't have to be this thing where you're going into this sequestering and it's it's now what you can take all this stuff that chris says and i mean i felt like i was building up a sweat just listening to you talk about it because i know how some of those pyramids run and how exhausting it is and to know that you can just do that you know i, I literally could stop what i'm doing right now and do it right afterwards and have a hell of a workout that, that's empowering I love that. Well, and, and I think a lot of people, a lot of people are confused about really what's going on. Social distancing does not mean cut off all ties with humanity. It just means stay away from people. Yeah. As a, as a society, we're a tribe where people are tribes, men and women are tribal by nature. Communication is, is key. And in order to maintain a functioning society, we still have to be able to communicate. We still got to be able to talk and be around people and FaceTime, Zoom calls, Facebook lives. Those are all a fantastic way. Like tomorrow I'm going to, I'm hosting a Zoom call for the entire high school, all the kids, everybody that wants to just come on and just talk. Just awesome. see each other's faces. Just laugh. Have a good time. Like share stories about what you're doing, how your siblings are driving you nuts. Like whatever it is, it, it's you know the big topic for us is going to be spring sports because we just found out last night that we are going to have a spring sports season. So the kids are excited. My phone's blown up. It's a really important time to communicate and still talk to people. We can't yeah. just go into these bubbles of our houses just because we're on a lockdown. Like no, reach out yeah. to. I think it's so important you can build when we're communicating, we're using all these extraordinary pieces of technology that we have to facilitate it. You know, we're either, we can build community around fear. So we call up and say, Chris, how scared are you? Oh, Jesse, I'm so scared. How scared are you? Which is okay to feel it, but we're not feeding it. You know, acknowledge what we're feeling, but then really make an intention, make a goal to build your community around the goals, positive things like doing these movement things. If you, if you followed Chris's program every single day while you're in this, the, our lockdown quarantine and beyond, you'd be in amazing shape. And, mm -hmm. you know, speaking of those, Chris, I had another question. If people, so some people, this might be their first foray into doing home fitness. 
if they only had access or are able to get one piece of equipment, just one piece of equipment, what would you recommend people get? Uh, okay, I'm gonna do a 1A and a 1A, B1. Because there's really two pieces, well, there's actually three. Okay, over deliver on everything, right? Here we go. Piece number one is a TRX or any sort of suspension trainer that you can get. The cool thing about a TRX versus some of the other things that are out in the market is TRX actually comes with a door attachment. So wherever you're at, you can slide it into your door jam and you got a piece of equipment to train with. TRXs are fantastic. They run you, uh, I think, anywhere from about 149 bucks on up. Okay, so if that's a little out of your price range, drop it down a little bit, go to a local store and find a kettlebell. Kettlebells are incredibly diverse, or a, a, an equipment that's incredibly diversified. You can squat, hinge, row, push, throw. I mean, again, as long as you have an imagination, you can use something. But they're gonna probably run you about a dollar a pound or so. So if that's out of the budget and you wanna go even lower, go to your store and get a set of resistance bands. You can get a full set of resistance bands for 20 bucks. You can attach them or to the bumper of your car. You can have somebody hold them. You can do push-ups, shoulder press. You can do bicep curls, triceps, sit-ups. You can use them for stretching and mobility to help get you into different positions. So if you can get all three of those, you have the ultimate home gym. But if you can only choose one out of those three, man, I, I'm really partial to kettlebells. I, I got a full set of kettlebells in my garage, 15 to 70 pounds, two of each. And, and I'm just crushing myself right now with kettlebells. Like, it's awesome. So they're, they're very diversified. Mm. Two, well, one more, one more question and then yeah. one, we'll do the rapid fire to finish. And then I know we're running short on time, so I want to be respectful. <clears throat> I, I've been coming up with creative ways to move. So when I brush my teeth, for example, I'll pace. Yep. When I'm on phone calls, I'll walk back and forth, and I have my little step counter. And so I find that over the course of the day, if I'm on a phone a lot, I can get you know a couple miles in. Yeah. Any other like quick creative movement tips that people might not think of that they can do from home? You know, um, yes, actually there is. I make, I make office workers do this all the time. Whenever you, if you're sitting down for an extended period of time and for an extended period of time for me is anything over 20 seconds and you get up and you go somewhere, lunge there. Do huh, walk I love lunge. that. For office workers, I always make people, it's like, you're going to drink so much water that you're going to have to get up every 20 to 30 minutes. And I do that on purpose because then I make them lunge through their office all the way to the bathroom. And when they drink that amount of water, they're going to get eight, nine, 10 trips and they're going to get two, 300 lunges in in a day. So I don't need to have them go, uh, go to the gym. Right. So anytime, if you sit for longer and I'll even be really nice, say five minutes and you get up before you get up and start walking around, do five push ups. do one push up for every minute that you were sitting one squat for every minute that you were sitting. So okay. that all of a sudden when you start getting into it, it's like, okay, I'm going to watch avatar. Ooh, I'm not sure <laughs> you want to watch that because by the time you're done and get up, you're going to have to do 197 push-ups and 197 squats. That's awesome. So just, just things like that, yeah. you know, um, anytime you get up, make sure you're doing some sort of exercise. I love that, Chris. And that's a perfect segue into closing up here. I have three rapid fire questions for you. The, 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 the movie or documentary you'd recommend people watching while they are locked down quarantine. Ooh, my, my all-time favorite documentary movie is Cocaine Cowboys. It blows me away what those dudes pulled off in the 70s and 80s. Okay. Uh, close second, I'm watching right now on Netflix, The Trials of Gabriel Fernandez. Absolutely heartbreaking. Um, those two documentaries, boom. Oh, you, uh, oh I could go off. The Foo yeah, Fighters. Right, uh, rapid fire, buddy. We, I, we're we're oh, keeping it short. Uh, what about uh, podcasts? Podcasts. Uh, the one podcast we recommend people listen to. Uh, okay, let's go. Number two. My podcast. favorite podcast. Um, okay, I love listening to the Model Health Show with Sean Modell. He's a personal trainer. He has the biggest, best health and fitness-based podcast in the world. Joe Rogan's a good one. Tim Ferriss, uh, one of my mentors, uh, Jay Ferrugia and the Renegade Radio podcast. Any of those four, money. And last but not least, the if you could recommend people read one book and one book only why they're quarantine lockdown what book would you recommend the alchemist hands down the alchemist that's a perfect way to finish yeah 
All right, everybody. Hey, Chris, man, you know, something I, I, you always just show up ready to deliver. And I, you know, I've been privileged to know Chris for many years as a friend now, and he's always that person that will go above and beyond and try to make sure there's valuable content. I'll get Chris's links <clears throat> and then we'll put them on here wherever this pops up so you can check out. And I encourage you to visit his page and get some of his free, his body weight workouts he's putting on. I think Chris is just another amazing example of human beings coming together, raising their hand to try to do what they can to support one another during this. There's, you know, in any sort of major event, there's, there's hardship, but there's always hope and happiness. And I think one of the incredible things that's arising from this is people helping people, people taking their expertise and, and showing you how you can do an amazing workout at home. And Chris and I were talking a little beforehand and he has so much to share. I had, I had to like, Chris, we're only going to be able to focus on this one area. We have this little bit of time. And I mean, he's just, he's such a wealth of knowledge. And Chris, I'm so grateful you took the time to share today. And I know that you are, you have done an amazing thing to empower people today to know that even if they're at home, they can still have a fantastic workout. They can still get in shape. They can still help do something to help them de-stress, relax, take care of their health and, and really be proactive in that. So thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Uh -huh. Yeah, my, my pleasure, Jesse. I appreciate you and everything that you do. All right, everyone. This has been this has been another episode of Handful of Hope. I'll put all of Chris's links, and we'll see you back here next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.